Good morning, good morning everyone. Thank you all. Okay, so we have English language. India and uh, Pakistan, UAE, UAE, United Arab Emirates, India, wow. Australia, India. <laughs> that is international. Oh, we have Romania, I know. What else do we have? Other places, exciting places. Germany. Hi, hi, welcome everyone. Good morning, good morning. Exciting to see all the time. So, the other. That's probably something before. Um, Give us another 30 seconds to join. Everyone is to the link. Saudi Arabia, hi, hi, good morning. Ireland, wow. Exciting. That's an interesting geography. Hi, everyone. Hello, good morning, Dara. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Hello. Oh, how are you? How are you guys? I'm okay. You'll have to excuse me. I'm I'm under the weather. I I've I've gotten sick in the last couple of days, oh, but I'll yeah. tell you here. Oh, and I look forward very much to the presentation. Hi everyone. Hello. 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 Malaysia, we have. Okay, great. Oh, good morning, good morning, everyone. Give it another. So if you want to share your location, you probably missed the big thing, but we have India and um, Pakistan. We have obviously uh, most most uh, guests here are from Israel. We also have UK and Australia and um, Romania, Germany, Ireland, Saudi Arabia, <laughs> Romania. Okay, wow. exciting, exciting. Argentina, oh my God. That's like all over the world. That's Amazing. Uruguay. Oh, oh my god. Thank you so much for joining us. So it's not only morning, it's probably Monday evening wow. or afternoon in some places, but right? okay. Could uh, oh, I Hi. Could you please stop the music? It's very yes. difficult to hear you. Yes, we are going to uh stop uh, the music. Uh Macedonia. Okay, I'm gonna also stop the uh, introductory slide where we just had you know the timer and everything and we're going to begin probably I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now we can also see each other good morning everyone yeah. hi hi good morning wow. hello <laughs> good morning good morning okay. good morning good morning good to see you all thank you thank you so much for joining uh, so this is a very exciting topic. Uh, Svetlana and I are very passionate about teaching English with technology, right? We both uh, uh, are very passionate about teacher training. We work with teachers. We also, I personally teach uh, English also with uh, uh, teaching students, you know, using the technology, but AI has been a real uh, interesting new world that has entered our <laughs> you know, daily life today, because in Israel, we have a lot of WhatsApp groups uh, discussing different opportunities, challenges, questions, problems. But, you know, I'm a positive person, so I'm very, very excited about it. And uh, Svetlana um, it also has tons of experience teaching all different age groups, different levels, CFR levels. Uh, she has been very, very active um, providing professional development trainings. She's a, she's a blogger too. She shares her ideas uh, for teaching with us, with colleagues. So um, she's from Montenegro, so she will introduce herself shortly in a bit. Uh, anyways, thank you very much for joining us. We're not gonna uh, hold a very long session. We'll try to keep it short and sweet. We have a few questions for you. Maybe just before I uh, give um, floor to Svetlana, I will launch a very, very short quiz, a poll on Zoom. Let's hope it works. So there are a few questions, uh, basically just three questions that you are invited to answer if you wish. 
the first one we wanted just to find out where you teach because mostly I invited my colleagues from uh, higher education institutions in Israel. But uh, since it went a little bit, uh, you know, global, as the topic is global and universal teaching English with AI, we also definitely have some school teachers from Israel and from abroad, uh, some um, maybe other institutions, private institutions, and maybe even not only teachers are here. So we want to see what's going on. Uh, also, in terms of your familiarity and interest in AI tools in general and in ChatGPT in particular. So there are three questions. Please answer. And we're going to continue in about 30 seconds. Okay, so everyone answered, I see. Perfect. I'm going to end the poll, share the results. See the results, right? So we do have mostly higher education institutions and um, we are starting to learn about the AI tools. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So how familiar are you with the tools? Uh -huh. see. Can you see the results on your screens? Uh, Algeria. Okay. We have an uh, interesting ge ge geography here again. Welcome, welcome everyone from all over the globe. Wow, so exciting. We are so happy to see you, Turkey too. Okay, we are so excited to welcome you here. Uh, I'm uh, in Israel, in Haifa, in the north uh, of Israel, uh, but I'm giving it now to Svetlana, giving the floor to Svetlana. Svetlana is from Montenegro, so please oh, just, uh, share your screen. Just a second, just a second. I need to switch on the... So today is an experiment. It's the first time I'm uh, streaming from Canva. I want to try its functionality. I've used Canva like for a long time, but I've never streamed any presentation from it. So I'll try how it works. Okay. Okay, right. Cool. Okay, we can see a screen. I know. Mm -hmm. And there's something is it's a bit lagging. It's more powerful. Okay. Okay. All right. Can you see the screen? Yes, yes. 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 Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. So uh, once again, hello and thank you for joining us today. My name is Lana. I'm a teacher, teacher trainer, an education consultant and a blogger. I, I need to check off. Today we'll be discussing the use of artificial intelligence in uh, English language teaching and learning. AI is definitely not a new topic in, in, in the field of education. I've read a lot about it, how it is expected to transform the field. I have seen some interesting applications of AI, and I'm sure that you've seen them as well, such as AI-powered assessment platforms that are used in higher education, vocabulary profilers, live translators, voice changes. Uh, some four years ago, I blogged about Google Assistant and five ways to use it in the ELT classroom. I found AI-powered technology especially what it can do for speech recognition fascinating. At that time, I wrote that my particular interest is artificial intelligence for speech recognition that is using a cognitive robot to interact with a human. And, uh, but it wasn't until last December that I truly understood the potential of AI to transform the field of education and the ELT industry in particular. Before that, it was more like a, a, a gimmick, more like a fancy factor something that can increase engagement of students, but not something that will be integrated in practice. And in December, OpenAI introduced this chat GPT that I will talk a lot about today, though I will give some other examples of other AI tools, which is an example of what we call generative AI. This is where AI becomes particularly exciting because it can create new content that never existed before. 
ChatGPT is a large language model that was trained on the entire internet. That makes it fascinating, including all of the content published online before 2021. So if there are any bloggers here, or if you have ever published your article online, that information is in ChatGPT and it will be using it. It has a simple chat interface, similar to a chatbot, which allows users to ask questions and receive content based on the information that it was trained on. ChatGPT is very good at mimicking human language. And that's why it's, it's, it's quite convincing. As I was preparing for this webinar, I asked ChatGPT to write an introduction for me. I said, write me a text for an English teacher, introduce an AI to her fellow teachers. And it said, dear fellow teachers, I would like to introduce you to the exciting world of artificial intelligence. I, AI is a branch of computer science that deals with the creation of intelligent machines that can think, learn, and adapt like humans. With the rapid advancements in technology, AI is becoming more prevalent in our daily lives and it has the potential to revolutionize education. Then it gave me nice three examples and a well-rounded conclusion. I was happy as a teacher of English because that's exactly what I would expect to get from my students, college students writing an essay. But that felt too formal. So I said, make it shorter and more fun. And then it came up with the following. Are you ready to level up your teaching game with the power of artificial intelligence? It's time to embrace the future and see how AI can make your class more efficient and engaging. So join me on this AI adventure and let's have some fun exploring the endless possibilities it calls for education. That sounded more like a speech of some motivational speaker. And I suppose that if you replace it with something else, it'll be the same speech. So, but, but pretty good for a machine. So I thought I should give it a human touch. And that is to AI or not to AI, which is the question for our today's webinar. Today, we'll focus on the reasons for using AI, why we should actually use it. Because often we're given a tool and without any explanation why, right, we're explained how to use it. And then somehow we go to the classroom and try to use it. But today we'll try to think about the why. So we'll focus on the why of using AI in the classroom. I'll also provide some specific examples of how I use AI powered tools. And we will discuss potential applications of AI in ALT, again, with a focus on teachers today. Because you know, that's a pretty, pretty interesting field and we can be discussing the, the effect of AI on learners and learning, but today I will talk about us teachers mainly. My definition of AI for teachers would be using computing power to do things much more efficiently and quickly than teachers could possibly do, thereby giving teachers more time to focus on meaningful practice in the classroom. Meaning that if we can find some tasks that can be automated, and AI can help us with that. We can spend more time on supporting our students in the classroom, on uh, preparing for our cl classes, on, uh, ba so basically that's about reducing the workload that we have and spending that time on more meaningful practice. The benefits of AI include, okay, automation of tasks such as administrative tasks, writing performance and assessment reports, Writing lesson plans, you know that chat GPT can generate a lesson within seconds. Planning, curriculum writing, grading. AI can also help grade exams uh, using an answer key and collect data on student performance. That's again, not something new. That's, uh, these platforms are often used in the field of higher education. Personalization, based on this data that it gets, it can help personalize the learning experience of uh, for, for our students by designing or helping us design content that is tailored to their needs, level, and interest. Additionally, AI can provide meaningful and immediate feedback to students, which can be less damaging to self-esteem, allowing them to be more comfortable with making mistakes required for learning. Because, you know, there is a statement, robots never judge. It's much easier to talk to, to a robot that will be correcting your mistakes other than a teacher sometimes or, or colleagues if that's corporate training or fellow students. 
It can also be used to provide support to students outside the classroom and foster their autonomy. And that's again, a huge area to explore. It can be particularly useful for supporting students with special needs. And um, at, at, at the moment, we know that it works, it works really well with dyslexic students. And I'm talking about uh, text-to-speech uh, technology, text-to-speech recognition. It works really well. Detecting words when it guesses or predicts certain words. And then again, it's easier for students. And it simplifies their life and our life. Now, uh, there are, as I mentioned before, there are a number of AI powered tools and platforms available. Have you heard of or tried any of these tools? A uh, lot of them, just in no particular, in no specific order. Just look at them. Have you used or tried any, any of these tools? Maybe you can write on the chat just the number. Yeah, that's that's how, many, how many tools of this have you tried yourself? Maybe let's see on the chat. Uh, three, five, good, good. Just, that's just a small fraction of tools available. <laughs> I basically chose the ones that I have tried myself, but I think there are many more, there are many more. Oh yeah, ooh, about them, great. Mainly Grammarly, ooh, Grammarly fans. Yeah. These tools cover, uh, cover a wide range of tasks and areas such as chatting, right? Uh, again, Google Assistant or Alexa, Chatbot Live, Character AI, speech to text apps like Happy Scribe, you probably use them as well, text editors like Grammarly, tools for writing like Copy AI or Bedtime Story or Story Wizard, text to speech like Speechify or Play HD, video editors like DID, and generative AI for generating images from text like DALI 2 or Mid Journey. While all these tools are designed for performing specific tasks, ChatGPT is particularly interesting as it can perform many tasks such as reading, writing, translating, and coding, and many, and many others. And again, as I said, it's very good at mimicking language. And it's very convincing. The output uh, of, of ChatGPT is very convincing. One cannot help but get the impression that this is a tool that can do it all. One tweet, uh, when I was getting ready for the webinar, I put this tweet and it made me chuckle. And making a lesson plan about ChatGPT, and it occurred to me that I could use ChatGPT itself to make the lesson plan. Then I could use ChatGPT to generate all the students' responses, and then use ChatGPT to evaluate these responses. And then I could go home. Why did I bother writing this tweet? I could have simply asked Ch ChatGPT. So it seems like a magic tool, like a magic wand. And uh, in addition to the wide range of tasks that it can perform, and that's where it's magic coming from, it can remember what the user said earlier in the conversation. So you get this illusion of a conversation since it remembers what you said. And it allows you to provide follow-up corrections, allowing it to learn in the process. So while you're talking to it, it's learning from you. So you can train it to understand certain prompts that you give. However, like any tool, it has its limitations. It may generate incorrect information, and that's what we should know. Invent facts and quotes, actually it's really good at lying. And, and they look convincing and you start believing, yeah, that, that's what somebody said. Then you start checking, you start Googling, nothing. It just invented the facts. Of course, it does indeed make mistakes. That's why uh, it's not yet a tool that we can completely outsource tasks to. I'm not quite a tool that can be used by our learners without guidance, at least for now. But the potential is no doubt huge. At the moment, new AI-driven tools are entering the market. And you've probably seen, if you are following some Twitter accounts, you see that every day, every second, there appear new and new AI tools. And there are lots of integrations with open AI. There are also numerous websites where you can find information about AI apps available. One such, uh, one such resource is Futurepedia, where you can search for tools by categories, pricing, and features. That's actually a really good resource, and every day it adds more and more tools. So at the moment, it has over 700 AI tools in its database, but I think there will be more. There are also many concerns that um, okay. 
that speech over here. Oh. Okay, sorry, I called. No, 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 no. All right, that's that technical moment that I was thinking about. And magically, it got us this Futurepedia. Okay. All right. All right, I'm sorry. Sorry, it got me out of Canva. Okay. If anyone has any questions, you can find Q and A on the Zoom uh, menu. You can post your questions there. For Svetlana, she will address them at the end. But um, you can also write in the chat if you want. I'll try to monitor everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll try to. It's very sensitive. So the second I press any button, it gets me online because it's actually mm -hmm. in the online mode. Anyway, right. uh, getting back to the tools, there are also many concerns heard from teachers, especially university or college level teachers, but G chat GPT marks the end of writing. Teachers are worried about students turning in essays uh, written by chat GPT. You've probably heard about this concern. And now, we have a number of tools to check whether the content is AI generated. Though students are smart and often they invent new ways of, uh, well, actually avoiding their content to be checked and to be labeled as AI written. But that's probably a topic for, for a different presentation. Anyway, the key question is whether these tools are just gimmicks that may increase students' engagement for a short period of time but will not add any value to teaching and learning? Or is it a disruptive technology that will eventually transform teaching and learning? I think the approach that we should take should be based on our particular practices and context and the challenges we face. And it should be aligned with our goals. So the tool does not come first and isn't used for its own sake. In product design, there is a term called pain points. Pain points are unmet needs that need to be satisfied in the form of products or services. So let's take a look at some needs that we may have as teachers. And uh, there will be a task for you as well. Can you guess which voice is human? I'm a university teacher. I am responsible for designing examination materials and assessing my students. I'm a teacher and I teach multi-level groups. I want to give more support to my students. I also seek ways to meet the needs of every student in my classroom. I'm leading a CLIL program and I need to develop a set of learning materials. I'm a corporate trainer and often I have to design materials to meet specific needs of my learners. I design digital materials for learners of English and I often find it challenging to find just the right images. I'm a university teacher. Next one. Okay, well, the DJ doesn't work. All right, so who do you think has a human voice, not AI generated? None. Number three, Cleal teacher. Who knows? Right. Number three, Cleal teacher. Cleal teacher. Okay, Cleal teacher wins the race. Number five. Interesting. None, all AI, right? Many people said none, actually, or three or five. It's it's an interesting discussion. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so there must be a trick, right? Yeah, you are right. Actually, there are no human voices here. All are AI generated. And um, but basically, uh, we'll talk about that a bit later. But it's it's really interesting because the technology is advancing. If you look back five years ago. If you listen to any robot talking, then it would be it would have this robotic voice with no emotion at all. Now the technology has developed really well, and we can make listening comprehension activities using AI generated voices, and they will sound pretty much human. I, I will showcase some other voices a bit later. 
anyway, these are my pain points that I had at a particular point of my career. As a university teacher, I was responsible for designing examination materials to assess students' learning. These were typically closed vocabulary and grammar tests that I had to produce in four variants. So every semester I had to write uh, a pack of examination materials in four variants. And I had to think really hard what to include, how to model, how to rephrase, and um, that would take really much, much time of mine. I also taught at language schools where I often had pretty large groups, often multi-level. I had a never-ending conflict between the course book that I had to use as prescribed by the curriculum or the language school and my students' needs and interests. I also led a curriculum and CLIO program. And again, the main issue was always how to design materials to meet the needs of our CLIO students in a particular context. As an ESP and corporate trainer, the role I'm doing at the moment as well, I need to design quite specific materials for particular niche contexts. And often I have to do it from scratch. And often there are no materials available. So I have to dig for, for various texts and try to invent something. As a course designer, I need to design a learning path for students that would cover all four scales, productive and receptive, and try to find the materials that would help achieve particular learning outcomes. Overall, I spent an inordinate amount of time looking for and creating materials and aligning them to my students' needs, and now they see a far level. Oh, okay, something goes wrong. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry. So these are these are my pain points. Now the question is for you. Think about your practice. I know that you all come from different contexts. What are your pain points? Can you please write them in the chat box? What are you working on at the moment? What is your pain point? What is your unmet need? What is something that is eating up much of your time? Correcting essays. Mm -hmm. Marking. Lesson planning and creating activities. Designing a curriculum from scratch. Oh, I can relate to that. Time constraints. Correcting writing assignments. Testing. Finding good pictures. Resolve teachers' issues. Okay, plagiarizing, making exams, marking assessments. I would say we are all from different contexts, right? But we share pain points. They are all the same. Same story. Therogenic class, multi-level classes, again, marking assessments, finding good articles, writing exams and marking. Mm -hmm. Item writing, writing also EL policy, policy documents. All right. Now the question is, is it possible to address them with AI? And if it is, how can AI help address them? At times to meet your needs and produce the best results, you may need a single tool. So basically a single tool may, may address all your points, may create a lesson plan, may deliver the plan, may assess students, right? And then you go home, or you will need a mix of tools Oh, how the very thought of artificially. So uh, when I was preparing a, a video for our webinar today, have you seen it online? I'll probably play it for those who haven't seen it. Intelligence brings joy to the hearts of English teachers. It is a tool of unrivaled potential, allowing us to mine the depths of language with ease. Imagine the marvels that AI can bring to the study of Hamlet. With but a simple command, we can analyze the frequency of certain words or phrases and discern the themes that pervade the play. Or, if we so desire, we can use AI to generate new dialogue in the style of Shakespeare, giving our students a chance to engage with the language of the bard in a fresh and exciting way. In truth, the benefits of artificial intelligence for English teachers are manifold. Whether we use it to analyze literature, generate new writing, or assist in language learning, it is a powerful ally in our quest to unlock the secrets of the English language. 
So let us embrace this technology with open arms, and together let us delve deeper into the world of AI, assisted language instruction. I hope you enjoy this webinar. All right. So when I was creating this video, I wanted to showcase uh, AI tools and how they can introduce variety in the classroom and bring literary characters to the classroom. In our case, getting Shakespeare to talk to, to the teachers. To make this video, I used four tools. I used ChatGPT to generate the script for William Shakespeare. Actually, this video is 100% AI generated, so no human, <laughs> human touch. I asked ChatGPT to generate a text in the style of William Shakespeare addressing teachers who will participate in the webinar AI Assisted Language Teaching. I then created his image in Mid Journey uh, with the prompt William Shakespeare sitting uh, in, a, in, in a McDonald's restaurant facing the camera photorealistic. Then I created a voiceover on HTTP Play HD using the script generated on ChatGPT. And then finally, I uploaded the image and voice over into the DID editor and let it do its magic. And then we got Shakespeare talking. Creating that video took me about 10 minutes, which sounds like incredible, right? 10 minutes to make the whole video of Shakespeare talking, addressing teachers. But I had already experimented with the tools, with these services, and I knew the how to process. Each tool requires a certain set of skills and wow. has a learning curve. But if it addresses your pain points, it will be a good investment of your time and you will see a return on your investment in the form of more time to zoom in on meaningful practice in the classroom. Start small, gradually scale up, see what works what, and what is a waste of time. So explore the tool, experiment and do some user testing. Now I'll show you a few examples of practical applications of AI and how they helped me to address the needs I had. Because again, so much theory, right? So much statements, like so many statements, like it, they are working, they, 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 they are magic tools. But now I'll show you a few examples of what I have done and how uh, they benefited me and my practice. You know that learners often need some more drill and practice to achieve mastery in speaking on a certain or a certain skill or sub skill when it uh, before it becomes uh, automatic. And often uh, a large amount of our time in the classroom may be spent on drilling. So to avoid that, I've designed a number of tools to help students practice at their own pace, allowing for more in-class time to focus on polishing their skills. So for instance, I have created the elaborator tool, which helps students answer the five power questions, as we say. What do you think? Why do you think that? How do you know this? Can you tell me more? What questions do you still have? So to reduce the wait time in the classroom, because at times you ask a question, what do you think? And then you get a pretty short answer, not elaborate. I've, I've uh, created this tool, thinking that they will practice at home uh, on their, uh, at their own pace, and they will be more prepared. So this might reduce the wait time in the classroom. One more example is the question chart that we produced jointly with Miguel Miguez from On The Page ELT blog. Probably you've heard about him. Okay. This frame, okay, next. Okay, no, sorry. Magic Kusa. So that's the question chart. This framework is effective for generating a wide range of questions, and it can be used for reading and listening comprehension or to discuss a specific topic in class. It is suitable for all types of learners and can be used at any stage of learning. So that's a universal tool. And that was the idea. However, there is one limitation of the tool that I couldn't, uh, I mean, there was one limitation that I couldn't address at all. And many teachers were asking me, can you include some accuracy checks? Because when students make up sentences, they would need to know whether the sentences are correct or not. As such, that's just the number of sentences that they create. But I couldn't program grammar and vocabulary checks without setting strict limitations on vocabulary range and topics, because that's all about limitations. 
Therefore, as a teacher, I have to manually review and identify errors in all the sentences produced by my students, which was pretty much time consuming. With chat GPT, it became possible to check students' sentences for grammar and vocabulary accuracy. Now students can input their sentences into chat GPT and ask it, ask it to check them. Now, somebody would say uh, it was also possible with Grammarly. Students could immediately see the results. But I would like to show to you the difference between Grammarly correction and the correction that can be provided by ChatGPT. The explanation of errors may, uh, may not be as user friendly as prov uh, by, provided by Grammarly. If you see, there is one sentence which is explained by ChatGPT and Grammarly. And that is, where is or where are your wallets? So Grammarly explains that the singular verb is does not appear to agree with the plural subject wallets. Consider changing the verb form for subject verb agreement. It's a pretty technical description, and I'm sure that you have some learners who may not understand actually this explanation at all. Because it's too technical, I would say it's written for linguists or those who are good at linguistics. And uh, ChatGPT just says, well, wallet is a singular noun, so it should be, where is your wallet? That's the explanation. And I would say it's, it's probably much more user-friendly compared to Grammarly. There is an interesting difference. If you look at the sentences, uh, the two, uh, between the, the two platforms, the corrected versions that, uh, that they suggest are a bit different. Grammarly suggests, where are your wallets? That's the right sentence. While ChatGPT uh, sees that as, where is your wallet? And if we think about it, ChatGPT was trained on the internet. It was trained on actual language and use. So it may suggest the sentence, where is your wallet, which is more appropriate, I would say. How many situations can you think of when somebody would ask, where are your wallets? How many wallets would you have, actually? Additionally, ChatGPT can explain grammar rules in simple terms that the child could understand. So if this, uh, this definition is unclear, then we can always ask ChatGPT to make it simpler, to explain it better, or probably to give some examples. With chat GTP, GPT, sorry, you can turn it into a learning experience. For example, instead of asking chat GPT to correct sentences, just to get the number of sentences that are incorrect, or just to get corrected sentences, you can get learners to ask, to ask it to say how many sentences are incorrect. So that will turn it into an exercise already. So without telling me which, uh, without correction, can you please tell me which sentences are incorrect? Or can you please tell me how many sentences are incorrect? And ChatGPT may say something like three of the sentences are incorrect. Then you can ask it to tell you which sentences are incorrect. Well, you can try and spot the mistakes on your own. And then you can ask it to tell you which sentences are incorrect. And uh, after that, they can ask. Okay, and um, after that, they can actually ask for, or our students can ask for some additional clarification, additional explanation, what is incorrect. But uh, I deliberately included one part. Again, chat GPT is not ideal. And as I said, at times it does make mistakes. That's why we cannot fully outsource this function to chat GPT. Sometimes, at a time of doubt, your students may need you to explain probably something or probably to check whether chat GPT is right or wrong. For example, it insisted on, uh, on it, it picked the following sentence that was the question, where does he work? And it picked it as incorrect. So I said, well, it is correct. Can you, can you, can you try and explain what is wrong with it? And it writes, well, there is no subject key in, in the question. And I again input that question saying, where does he work? The subject is there. And then that's the apology coming from chat, chat GPT. I apologize, you are correct that the subject key is present in the sentence, where does he work? This is grammatically correct. I apologize for any confusion caused by my previous statement. But again, if you do not ask, if you take the, the whole output for granted, then you may think, yeah, that's, that's the wrong sentence. As a follow-up activity, uh, students can also practice answering their questions on their own by prompting ChatGPT to act as their teacher and ask, um, ask them these questions one by one. 
it's important to know that while chat GPT is a powerful tool, again, it's not foolproof, it may make mistakes, so it should be, shouldn't be over relied. And that's, that's the way it asks questions. You can ask it to ask your questions one by one, waiting for your answer. Again, you can design a particular prompt for your students. So uh, we cannot just ask students to go and try chat GPT on their own. Ideally, you should provide them with a set of prompts, what exactly they should be asking. So basically our task is to actually teach them how to use chat GPT. Well, you already know about ChatGPT being able to write lesson plans and reports and help work on more complex tasks, uh, rubrics, framework documents, such as, for example, I tried to use it to map competencies with learning outcomes when I was preparing the curriculum. Opinions differ as to whether the text or plans generated by ChatGPT are good or not. So some people say it's rubbish. The output is absolutely rubbish. We should not be using it. It's too simplistic. Some uh, say that they can always be used as a starting point or, or as a source of inspiration. And I believe that that's a great starting point. That's a great source of inspiration. For example, when you are planning a lesson and you need a quick activity to practice articles, you can ask ChatGPT to suggest a few activities. It will take a second for it to spit out, for example, five activities to practice articles. And then you can always write continue if you need more ideas. If you're not satisfied with the five ideas that it gives you, you can ask it to continue the list and it will give you more and more and more. Again, it was trained on the entire internet, including all our blog posts or published materials ever produced on the planet Earth. And then you can ask it to make a task. For example, I asked it to give me a few examples of uh, activities, practice articles. I like the activity article scavenger hunt. And I asked it to make an article um, to make this task for A1 level students. And here is an example of an article scavenger hunt for A1 level students on the topic of food. Again, I, I gave a few parameters and I got the activity ready. Of course, it would need some editing. But again, it's a matter of, of 30 seconds, of 30 seconds. Um, you might probably need some time to train the machine to produce text for A1 level students according to CEFR. Again, it requires some training, but I will mention that a bit later. Anyway, once you've done it, once you've trained the machine and you've showed to it what exactly you need and which framework you use and which parameters you would like to stick to, it will be of huge help. Text creation is probably one of the most interesting functions of ChatGPT. Uh, but one ag once again, uh, we have to think about what exactly we would like to get, or at least what we would like to get. We need to have this result in mind before we start using it. If you simply write, uh, write a text on the topic of food, the result may not be satisfactory. The ideal scenario is to use a backward design approach by starting with the desired final outcome, what you would like to have, or to get as a result and working backwards to determine the necessary parameters. If you have already used text to image software, such as Lead Journey, then you know that the more details you provide, the better the quality of output is. And I've shown to you um, in Canva, I quickly, quickly, Canva at the moment, by the way, has got this AI powered image generator, so you can use it. And I prompted, I prompted Canva to draw a house. And that's the house that I got. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. But a Mediterranean style house in the mountains with sunshine looks much better. And there are more parameters, more details. Uh, in the document that I shared on my blog, I um, on my blog on chat GPT prompts for teachers, I have included a few style snippets that might be helpful when creating text using chat GPT. We can add various parameters, ask it to write it as a human. That's actually the quickest probably style snippet ever. Whenever it produces a text, if you ask ChatGPT to write it like a human would, you would get a much better text, more human-like. human, human -like. Or you can add nuance or prescribe some vocabulary choice or sentence length or the overall tone. Later on, we'll probably share the presentation right with our participants so you can read that in detail. 
Uh, the text modification function of uh, ChatGPT is also interesting because it allows us to produce text that are appropriate for specific language levels. For example, if you want to create a graded reader, you can simply ask ChatGPT to simplify text. By and large, ChatGPT usually generates text for B2 level learners. So by default, that's B2 approximately. When I was experimenting with text levels it can produce, I gave it a B2 level text from the British Council website. And I asked ChatGPT to make it appropriate for B1 level learners and asked it to list all the changes it made. So I got a list of changes it made and I got a piece of text. Then I used several profilers online to uh, check the result in text. And the overall result was A2B1 approximately. Uh, yeah, A2B1. However, as I say, it might require some training to fine tune the output. I still think that there is much to be done in this area. ChatGPT has, does have the ability to perform different types of text modification. So it can shorten your text. Mm -hmm. It can shorten your text. It can extend your text. And there is one interesting function that I think will be of use to those of you who write examination materials, and that is modeling. It can also model the text that you give. This could be at the level of text when you give uh, a text and then you ask it to change the setting, to change the characters but then it will produce a new text for you. You can uh, introduce a different scenario, for example, some Harry Potter setting, and it will produce, again, spit out a nice Harry Potter related text. Or it can help you write a new task following a particular model. For example, I, at the level of sentences, I asked it to produce three sentences following the model, Sarah drinks tea, but she doesn't drink coffee. And it produced three um, sentences. You can ask for more always. I also tried it with um, multiple choice questions. He gave it a task uh, to write a new task, write a new uh, question using the following as a model. I'm very happy to live, to have lived, to believe, to believe in, in the UK. I really miss being there. And the, uh, I was pretty much satisfied with, with the answer. So it generated the following option. I'm very pleased. It kept the same options, as you see, it, to live in a small town. I really miss the peacefulness. And of course, we can further modify that and ask it to use different options as well. But again, it's a, it's a matter of asking it to do what you would like it to do. Okay. I've heard some comments of teachers saying that these are just general texts. So I thought it would be a good idea to try and create a set of materials covering the four skills using the capabilities of AR. AI. So what I did as an example, I decided to create a set of materials for a group of IELTS students with the focus on phrasal verbs for IELTS speaking. I, so I asked ChatGPT to generate a list of 10 phrasal verbs that would impress an IELTS examiner. It came up with a list of 10 verbs. Then I asked it to use them and write a speech in the style of Simon Sinek to help boost the confidence of IELTS students with particular tips and examples. I edited the speech and asked ChatGPT to extract collocations with my list of phrasal words from the text and use them to create success stories for two students. Additionally, I asked it not to repeat any sentences. The ChatGPT database may lack some cultural and common or common sense knowledge, and that's what we should be aware of. For example, I didn't specify the names of IELTS students, so it generated two success stories with two British students, John and Sarah, who, as we know, wouldn't need to take the IELTS test to study in the UK to start with. So I changed the names and I did a bit of editing. Then I did a bit of formatting in Canva to make the text look appealing for learners. I used some images AI generated. Uh, by the way, now Canva also includes an AI-powered text-to-image tool. It's actually generated ChatGPT functions, so it's integrated the model. Now you can be using ChatGPT straight in, in the Canva itself. Okay. So that's what I got. That's the resulting set of materials. In total, text generation took me about 10, 15 minutes. But again, I knew what I wanted to get in the end. So I, I, I had it clear in my mind what I want to get. Editing and formatting took a bit longer, about 30 minutes. I tried to find an interesting format to make this materials appealing. Uh, 
I also created an interactive gap fill using PH5 plugin for my website. So that's an interactive gap fill to practice. Uh, so in an hour, basically in an hour, I had a set of materials that could be used to practice reading, writing, and speaking. And the only skill to be covered was listening comprehension. So I took Sarah's success story, and it's Sarah. And I asked Chat GPT to act as Sarah and describe her experience. Then I used the story and I turned it into speech using a text to speech software and then made a video using DID video editor. Um, actually, you can skip this text to speech. You can use a, a video editor. Nearly every video editor has this text to speech function, but I needed to find a good voice. And I don't have a paid subscription of DID. So I had to look for some other accent. And I found that in, in another software. And the free accents there did not really fit, so I, I used a different one. And otherwise, you can just use DID straight away. So the whole process may take about, well, probably five, 10 minutes, not more. And here's our girl. Kathy. I can say that my experience with the test was challenging, but ultimately rewarding. I had always been ambitious and determined to achieve my goal of studying abroad, and the test was the next step towards making that happen. I knew that success in the test would require a lot of hard work and dedication, so I set clear goals for myself and worked diligently to achieve them. I was determined to succeed, no matter what it took. I knuckled down and focused on my work, making sure to study regularly and consistently. I also set a schedule that included dedicated time for studying each day, which helped me to get into a routine and make steady progress towards my goal. All right, I would say that's pretty impressive. I believe that when the why is clear, the how is easy. So today we focused on the benefits AI may give to us or promise to give to us in the future from the teacher's angle. And the key takeaway, takeaways for today would be that it's important to use AI tools that meet your needs. So uh, think about your pain points, find the tools that may address them, learn how to use them, experiment and see if they work for you. There are definitely many more things to explore, including learner autonomy and ethics in use of these materials, copyright and skills that are needed to use these tools and what will need to change or what we will need to change in the classroom, in the processes, Possibilities in materials creation, including uh, creating materials in real time mode, creating them while you are teaching and many others. But I believe that we are at the start, so we have time to get ready and learn. Now, just finishing up, if you'd like to reach out to me, you can always find me on my website, my English domain home. That's the website for learners, websites uh, for the blog for teachers eOTication. You can follow me on Twitter or you can follow me on Facebook and Facebook. Now we could probably use some time remaining for questions. Elena, you are muted, we don't hear you. Sorry, thank you very much, Svetlana. Thank you, it was really, really impressive. We got some uh, comments and questions, interesting questions. Please uh -huh. take a look at the chat. There's a link to Mentimeter a question. We would like to see your reaction to you know, and compare probably at the beginning, Paul, uh, and uh, what you think now about the AI tools in education. And we will then move on to <clears throat> address some questions and comments. There is another link I would like to share with you. One second. I will share the results for Mentimeter. And there is one more link for a Padlet where you can, again, share your pain points or perhaps problems or uh, opportunities, as some of you already told, where you can use such tools in your own teaching. Um, there is also a place where you can write your uh, insights. If you had any insights, any interesting ideas you came up with uh, during this session, always good to have it written down before you forget. And um, there is another 
question that I think uh, is really interesting and um, even uh, challenging to us, uh, thinking of uh, the skills now that we need as teachers in order to leverage the AI for teaching. So what kind of skills do we need to improve, to hone, right, to get uh, better at as teachers, as teacher trainers, some of you are, are teacher trainers, so what do we need to, to teach the future generation of teachers of English? Um, and so you have those two links on the chat. And thank you very much for writing on the on the chat too. Uh, Svetlana, you have access to Q and A's, and you can also yeah, I, I see, I see, I see four questions, but I see that many participants have actually answered their questions in, in the chat. So I'm I'm looking through the questions. Anyway, is Duolingo AI? I wouldn't have thought so. Yes, it is AI based. Moran is asking on the chat, can a student capture working uh, sheets and ask ChatGPT to solve it? I guess yes, why not? <laughs> well, definitely they can, definitely they can. Uh, that's actually, that's why there is this major concern that students will be writing essays, actually not will be writing, I would say they are already writing their essays using ChatGPT. And probably for a few months, teachers have been uh, probably correcting essays uh, written by ChatGPT, amazed by the by the uh, output and the results produced. Yeah. But then again, uh, my position on that is that I view it as something that needs to be changed in education. We cannot just uh, we cannot prevent students from using this tool. That's the tool of the future. That's the tool of today. Mm -hmm. I see what you have shared uh, in terms of your ideas following the presentation. What are your impression of the AI in education? The future, right? Overwhelming, but also opportunities. Excitement. And possibilities, excitement. Cheating, frustration. We also have some negative uh, connotation here, but obviously it's the mixed emotions. It's something that we can... We have to learn to deal with effectiveness, personalized, automatic possibilities, more training on prompts. That would be probably an answer to um, one of the questions, what do we need now as teacher trainers or teachers or right? even when we teach our students to use those tools, we probably need to learn how to teach to, to use the prompts correctly, right? Potential, revolution, robot magic, fascinating opportunity, Intriguing, challenges, frustration, okay, fluency, facilitation, probably I can't, progress, mm -hmm. excitement, answer. So you see the most, uh, the, the largest words are most frequent among your responses. So I would highlight the potential, exciting opportunities and overwhelming and future, right? So those five, I would say, are the key words in our uh, brainstorming conclusion. In terms of your input on the the insights and the skills, familiarity with tools, um, some areas of the uh, application of AI for us as teachers and teacher trainers could be design syllabi, providing personalized learning opportunities, practices. Yeah, guys, go to Bible now, please. Curriculum and so on. No, no, it's hard to build a house and build a house. It's hard to build a house. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I muted everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop sharing. I think it's really, really interesting. If you uh, want to address any of the questions, please do. Uh -huh. I see one question with Lana. Lana, you showed us some artificial voices of teachers somewhere really good where they all made in one program. Yes, they actually, the voices of teachers that you saw were made in one program. And that was, um, I think I used DID straight away, those three voices. That's why they sounded, I would say, I would say I heard that they were artificial, artificial. These are free voices, but they have a paid version. The paid version is so much better. And uh, at the moment, I would say, and that's something that I look forward to, uh, Microsoft has announced um, uh, about the launch of their model, which is called Valley. And this valley will be able to reproduce human voices. So the only thing you would have to do would be to feed uh, in 30 seconds of an audio recording. And then uh, the artificial intelligence tool powered by Valley will 
will actually regenerate the voice. So you will be able to use real voices. And that's exciting, that's exciting. So I, I suppose that's a matter of a few months when we can uh, actually play around with this tool, with this model. And that will be a huge leap forward in terms of uh, making pictures talk. Uh -huh. Maybe we can address just one last question. Uh, how likely are you, are, are you going to rely on AI to grade students' essays? especially considering your interaction with students throughout the year, seeing their progress, their effort. Are we going to rely on AI in grading? This is one of our hopes, right, as teachers, that someone can help us because this was one of the main pain points. What do you think, Svetlana? Can we train AI to, to grade students' writing with some kind of rubric that we, of course, uh, put as input uh, in our prompts? It's well, it, it, it depends. I mean, my general approach that we should not over rely on anything, on any single tool. Human control and monitoring should always be in place. And that's my approach. So I wouldn't blindly rely on something, taking for granted that the machine creates everything. But I would definitely rely on AI. So no over reliance, but they, I will rely on that, definitely. But again, uh, you have to input your parameters. You have to make sure that the machine knows exactly what, what you need to get. It's not as simple as just feeding in assays and getting grades. That's again, yeah. there, there must be some pre-work done first, and I would rely on that, but no over-reliance. I will be monitoring and I will be controlling the process. So that's, that's how yeah. I would approach that. I think one last question, I'm sorry, I already said that, but this is yeah. also Anna posted on Q&A. If teachers can use AI to prepare questions, students are able to provide their answers generated by AI. Mm -hmm. As the critical thinking is eliminated from this process, from this learning process, what's the purpose of that kind of education, I think? Uh, Svetlana, would you like to address it? Well, that's an interesting question. But then again, it questions the essence of the process. If students see it as a formal process of being graded, of producing a product, like writing an essay as a product, which will be formally graded. And if they take it as something just to get rid of the teacher, you know, to get the mark. And I, I think we should be asking the question, what is wrong with the process that students don't see it as something they are learning from, that they see as something they should produce, you know, and to get, to get a grade. But in essence, that's something that will, I suppose, have a transformational effect on education in general because we'll have to reconsider teaching and learning processes. We'll have to deal with students' motivation, with the way they approach learning, because we are focusing on learning to take place, right? Not on grading or producing products, not producing ready-made answers to the teacher, to, to make the teacher happy. They are there to learn. If they don't see it as a learning process, then it is an issue we have to consider. All of I don't us think community. Are interested in eliminating critical thinking, the opposite, we're trying to think pedagogically how to uh, instill the critical thinking, meaningful projects and assignments into our teaching of English. AI, in a way, can be a helpful you know, support. Uh, but again, it's, it's, if, and up until now, we have been talking about new pedagogies. Uh, I think from now on, we have to talk about some kind of new AI enhanced pedagogies and you know we have to consider all those challenges. Um, definitely critical thinking is something that we want to instill in our education, keep it yeah. uh, secure, but we cannot close our eyes and ignore the uh, presence of AI. Uh, furthermore, only, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, not only, not only we can't ignore, there is one more thing. Uh, we will need to teach students to use the tools. Now with Microsoft, you probably heard about it. Microsoft has uh, invested $10 billion in OpenAI and ChatGPT, which means that we can expect really many integrations, integrations in the Microsoft suite to start with. So ChatGPT will be integrated in Word, will be integrated in PowerPoint, in all the applications. Uh, at the moment, you every day you see the examples of new and new integrations, right? which means that it will be all around us. And we need to make sure that students know how to use this tool. And it should not like eliminate critical thinking. It should be sort of a scaffold for students. It, it should be something that will help them uh, critically think, creatively think, 
and at the same time uh, get this additional extra help in, in the form of chat GPT or any other similar models, language models. Right, this is definitely the future and the future is here and we have to embrace it and really think critically about our own pedagogies. This is our time to think how we can change our teaching to embrace the future. The future is today. Thank you very much, Svetlana. It was amazing. We are all impressed. You got like tons of thank you. Uh, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank such a great audience. Participation. <laughs> and have a nice day. We will be happy to see you in our future webinars. Take care. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Ilana, we will get the message. Yes, I'm going to share the, the recording. Yes, I'm going to stop. Thank the you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye.